South Dakota's double-A boys track scene has been dominated in recent seasons by Sioux Falls Lincoln, with the Patriot boys winning three consecutive state team titles by an average of 68 points. This year's edition might not be as complete as the one that racked up a gaudy 174 points at last year's state meet, but there's no denying Jim Jarofsky's Pats still entered this weekend as clear favorites. We just try to try to reload and just try to build on it. We, we've got such a great uh, tradition here, obviously, with Coach Bino and what he established, and we're just trying to follow in those footsteps. And it's something that that means a lot to these kids, and something that we talk about. Our, our seniors now, this will be the fourth year in a row if we do happen to win it. They haven't lost a, a scored meet in, in their four years here, so uh, it, it's something that we talk about and something that we pride ourselves on. And and there's a lot of other good teams, but um, we feel like we've got a good shot at it. While Lincoln is the team to beat, they'll have to be on their game to get by a talented and deep Watertown squad. The Arrows won the ESD Conference title two weeks ago and have the speed and the muscle to put a little pressure on the Pats. To be even be in the mix of the talk of being on that top podium, it, it, it's an honor, and, it, and these kids certainly deserve it. You know, you know, we've we've got some areas that we need to to, to improve on, and that's we got two weeks to figure that out. But um, again, kids do what they do, and that's all we can ask. And whatever happens, happens. Individually, there are a number in AA with the shot at weekends to remember. Watertown's Pierre Lear is looking to go back to back in both the high hurdles and the 300s and could win the high jump as well, while his teammate Jake Werner is top ranked in the 100 and 200 and leads the best sprint relay core in the state. Don't count out Harrisburg's Brecken Hamilton though, as Hamilton narrowly beat Werner at last week's ESD conference meet in both the one and the two. Expect a good battle there all weekend long. Also in the hunt for multiple individual wins is Lincoln's Tyler Hyatt, the favorite in the shot and the discus, plus fellow Patriot Andrew Lauer, who's ranked first in the mile and the two mile, and Surge's senior Ethan Brenneman, who's favored to repeat in the 800 and will anchor the Scoopers top ranked medley relay. Finally, keep an eye on Lincoln's Hunter Merkley on Saturday at Howard Wood Field. The junior is a week removed from setting the all-time South Dakota boys long jump record, and he's only half an inch away from becoming the first prep athlete in state history to reach 24 feet in that event. The AA girls team race in South Dakota looks to be one of the tightest of all six classes, with defending champion Brandon Valley and 2018 runner-up Sioux Falls Lincoln among the favorites once again. After three straight second place finishes, the Lynx finally earned that elusive team title last year, but head coach Troy Sturgeon knows it won't be easy to repeat this time around. We're going to be in the mix this year. We lost some really good athletes last season. Depth is definitely one of those issues, to find those kids that can come in and run during um, you know, relays, first day so we can have kids compete in the open events. Uh, we found some young kids that have been able to step up. Um, we're hoping that that will work out at the state meet for us, you know, going forward. But uh, there's some great competition out there. You have a lot of really good teams that could have a great weekend and, and you know, win the state title. Lincoln is set to assume their usual role as the Lynx main competition, though for this Pats team to win their third title in four years, they'll need to do it with depth as Morgan Hughes in the discus enters state track weekend as the only Lincoln athlete favored to win an event. Thankfully for Patriots fans, they've got depth in abundance as they'll score in almost every event. While Brandon and Lincoln will be in the hunt, so too will an upstart O'Gorman squad that's gone from a ninth place finish at state a year ago to becoming true contenders this time around. It's been great watching some of these girls over the last few years progress, you know, jumping further, throwing further, running faster. And we just got a great mix this year between younger kids and older kids, and hopefully it'll pay off during the state meet here. I don't really think we need any surprises. We don't have a kid that all of a sudden needs to, you know, make this huge jump or huge throw. But if our kids just do what they can do, you know, we'll have a good shot. Individually, this will be the last AA state meet for some of South Dakota's most decorated prep athletes, including Rapid City Stevens' Elizabeth Schaefer, who will look to add to her haul of six state hurdle crowns, Mitchell's Carly Herring, who's won three state high jump titles, and Brandon Valley's Krista Bickley, who's won four straight state 400 all-class gold medals and doubles as the Rushmore State's all-time record holder in that event. All three are top ranked in their respective specialties entering this weekend. Elsewhere, Harrisburg's Aaron Kinney is favored to sweep the sprints, just as O'Gorman's Aaliyah Hardy is the one to beat in the 800 and the 1600. Then there's Watertown's Elena Fallick, who could pull off wins in the pole vault, the long jump, and the high jump, though she'll have tough competition in all three. 
Last but not least, don't miss the double-A girl shot put in Brandon on Friday afternoon. Roosevelt junior Jasmine Greer has thrown over 47 feet this year to put her second all-time in state history. Her best mark of 47 feet one quarter inch is a foot better than the state meet record, which coincidentally is held by her current throws coach and former six-time Iowa State All-American Lisa Greibel. For the second half of this decade, St. Thomas More has been the standard in South Dakota's Class A boys track and fields. The Clavaliers have won three of the last four state team titles, and they're poised to add another trophy this weekend in Sioux Falls. We try not to put a whole lot of expectations on the team. We, we kind of coach from a process-based standpoint where if we can come in and, and do the right things on a daily basis and, and try to get better each day, that the things at the end of the year will take care of themselves. you got to go out and perform. Um, it's not always necessarily the best team that wins. It's the team that shows up that weekend and gets the baton around the track and, and performs in the individual events. STM's most consistent challenger during their recent run of success has been Sioux Falls Christian. The Chargers beat the Cavs to the title in 2017 and were runners up a year ago, and they've got enough depth to mount a challenge this time around. You know, we graduated a lot of kids from last year's squad, but everybody's healthy. We got a good core back, and uh, they're working hard. We're excited for the season. On an individual note, St. Thomas More's Jacob Hyde has a good shot to go unbeaten this weekend as he'll be one of the favorites in all three sprints and will anchor whichever sprint relay Scott Benson wants him to. Meanwhile, Hyde's teammate Jens Christensen might have only qualified in one event, but he's awfully good at it. He's the heavy favorite to repeat his state champ in the pole vault and has gone over the meet record by three inches already this year. Last but not least, expect West Central's Braden Peters to have a big weekend. He's got Class A's best 800 time by over three seconds, and he'll anchor the Trojans' top rank 4x8 and medley relays. No South Dakota prep track team has had more success this millennium than the St. Thomas More girls. Since 2006, STM has captured eight Class A state titles, and they're the favorites once again in 2019. It's not the same depth, but we do have some of those high performers, and right now we're trying to cultivate some of the younger talent and see if we can get them up to speed and, and able to help us in the relays, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be there in the end. St. Thomas Moore won last year's crown by 31 points, but this state meet race should be much closer with the Cavs' main competition coming from their own backyard. Fellow Black Hills powerhouse Custer will rely on a distance squad that captured a state cross-country title this fall, and they could make things interesting throughout the weekend. Individually, STM's Casey Cooper is the favorite in the 400 and the 800, so to pull off the double, she'll have to best her teammate and defending state champion Haley Timmer in the half in what should be one of the best races of the weekend. Another one to watch is Lennox's Allie Bainbridge, who's top ranked in the mile and two mile, with her 3200 meter seat time a full nine seconds under the meet record that was set back in 1991. Then there's McCook Central Montrose's J.C. Pulse, who's ranked top two in the 100, 200, and both hurdle events. The junior's already a two-time state champ and could add a few more titles to a resume this weekend. Then not to be overlooked, Elk Point Jefferson's Kenna Curry is the overwhelming favorite to win both the shot and the discus, while West Central's Avery Schmeichel has the best long jump in the field by a foot and also boasts the top time in the 100-meter hurdles as well. No team race in high school track and field in the Dakotas is harder to call year in and year out than the Class B boys of South Dakota. The usual lack of a dominant team makes for great drama on state meet Saturday as typically three or four B schools or more have a shot to lift the trophy until the very end. This year, however, I expect very little drama in South Dakota's smallest class thanks to the emergence of Viborg Hurley. The Cougars, who finished a close second to Freeman last year, are in line for big things this time around with multiple standouts in the sprints and the jumps and a big presence in the relays. If things go right, they could score upwards of 80 points. That's an unheard of number for Class B. What's wild is that they might need to score that much to hold off a talented wall squad that projects to do well in the sprints, the hurdles, and the relays. If things go right for the Eagles, there's a chance they bring the title back home to the world's greatest drugstore, but it'll take something special to get the better of Vibor Curley this weekend. On an individual note, Freeman's Colin Helma will look to retain his 400-meter title from 2018 while adding wins in the 100 and 200, but he'll face stiff competition from White River's Nick Seiler and Vibor Curley's Angel Johnson, to name a few. Johnson's tied for the top 100 mark with Seiler and also has the best long jump in the field, though both of those competitions will be hotly contested. 
Warner's Cody Larson, the reigning Class B state cross country champ, is ranked top two in the mile and the two mile and could walk away with titles in both, just as Bison's Shane Collins could in the shot and the discus. The B-Boys throws, though, will be a battle as Collins will have to contend with 2018 discus champ Colby Spader of the Smets. For the better part of the last three years, South Dakota's Class B girls track scene has been paced by Dubrook area, with the Dolphins capturing back-to-back -back state titles in 2017 and 2018 in relative comfort. They're back for one more go this year with a strong senior class that's looking for the three-peats. You kind of feel like you have a giant bullseye on your back, and, and we've talked about that with the kids that we do. Um, you know, the, when these kids were eighth graders and ninth graders, they were virtually unknown and they were able to kind of sneak up on people and, and now that's not the case. We talk a lot about that with them and, and the challenge, um, you know, that they have and that it's a good thing because it's, it's good to have expectations and it's good to have pressure. Unlike the last two seasons, Dubrook will face real competition for the title this year from the last team other than the Dolphins to win the class's big prize. That's right, Ipswich, who won five titles in a row from 2012 to 2016 and earned a runner-up spot last year, are back and they're ready to contend this time around with a team built on relays and success in the field. This team race between the Dolphins and the Tigers projects to be one of the closest in South Dakota this year and could come down to the 4x4, so brace yourself for a little late drama at Howard Wood on Saturday afternoon. Individually, Class B got a talent boost this year with the transfer of two-time state 400 meter champion Kaylin Belanger Pru from Todd County to White River. Kaylin's ranked in the top three in the 100, 200, 400, and 800, and she's got a legitimate shot to pull a Macy Hines and sweep four individual running events at one state meet. Others that are top ranked in more than one event include Gayville Vaughn freshman Maddie Fairley, who's number one in the mile and two mile, and Dubrook area's Shaylee DeBeer, who's trying to complete the unique 300 meter hurdle triple jump double this weekend.